I'm doing a C64 setup guide today for Launchbox. So before I start this setup guide, let me just ask you if you could please just hit notifications so you don't miss upcoming content. So first things first, let's look at the different file extensions for C64 games. And I think it's one of those areas which a lot of people don't actually get into. So when you're into Commodore 64 games or you're downloading them for whatever, you'll notice that they're going to have different file extensions. So for example, just there, I've got a new game, which is Pains and Aches. That's a D64. Uh, D64 means disk image. So floppy disk. Uh, you've got a CRT image here of a pig quest, and CRT means cartridge. So obviously cartridge is going to be a lot quicker loading than the D64. And finally, we got a dot tap, and dot tap actually means cassette image. And as we all know, cassette tapes are very slow loaders. So that's your three main file extensions here. So what I'm going to do first is just create a folder to put my C64 games into. So right click on the desktop or wherever you want to store your Commodore games. New and then create folder. And I'm going to just call this one C64 games. I'm going to drag my games into that C64 games folder I've just created. And now launch, launch box. And I'm going to show you how to make your games look better once we get the games put into the right place. So this is a fresh install of Launchbox, and this is the latest version. So let's just close this down. And first things first, I'm going to go up to Tools. From Tools, I'm going to go to Import, ROM Files. And this is going to bring up a wizard. So next on here... And I've just created a folder with my C64 games in, and it's asking us to select files to import. And this is actually asking for your games. So if you've got a single game and you just want to add it, then go to add files and select your game. In my case, I've got three. So I'm going to go to add folder. And I'm going to navigate to find where that C64 games folder is. And as we can see, it's right just here. So if I just highlight this by left clicking on it once, select folder. And that's brought that into the files to import, or rather the folder to import. So we're going to press next from here. And what platform are you importing games for? So obviously this is going to be Commodore 64. You can either type this in, or just drop down here and just search for Commodore 64, which is right here. Left click and press next. And it's going to ask us to choose an emulator. So for this... I suggest RetroArch. There's a very good core on it, which is a Vice core, and Vice is a very good emulation platform uh, where there is obviously a core for it too. So RetroArch, and I'm going to press Next here. Next part is going to ask us what we want to do with our games. I'm going to leave mine in their current location, so just select there and press Next. This next part is going to be uh, taking up a lot of hard drive space unnecessarily. So make sure you check through each one of these. And this is going to be your artwork. So what I normally do from here is I just go to check none. And that's going to uncheck everything. And then you can go through each one of these and choose what you want. So normally for setup guides, I just select box 3D. Uh, you know, all the basics. Uh, box 4 or whatever, or like I say, you can check all of them, and let's just go for that, and I'm going to press next. Configure MU Movies, so you're going to need to log in with MU Movies, which is going to give you additional videos, preview videos for your games, that type of thing, but you're going to need to sign up with MU Movies, like I say. Once you've signed up, just enter in your user ID and password. I'm not going to go into that right now, I'm going to just get you set up with the basics, so next from here. And from here, we can download bezels for our Commodore 64 games. As you can see just here, rather than having the black borders around your games, you can actually make it a bit more fancy with these bezels. So if you want to do this, just highlight or rather check download bezels and then just select which one you want. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just uh, do the basic of the basics. And from here, I'm going to just press next again. And it's picked up now my free games, which is in my C64 games folder. So we got my tap file, my CRT file, and my D64. Now, before I press finish, let's just remind ourselves that dot tap means cassette tape. 
dot CRT means cartridge and D64 is floppy disk. And let me tell you from first hand experience being a C64 nerd that the CRT images are the fastest loaders, but not all games are available in these. And obviously seconds of that are the D64 images. They're the seconds quickest loaders. Okay, so finish from here. And it's going to search our metadata online to find bits and pieces of artwork and information for our games. And here we have it. So it's searched online for artwork. We got the artwork of Pains and Aches, which is quite a recent game. If we go to a pig quest, we've also got information and some screenshots of that game. And I'm going to recommend this game. It came out uh, earlier this year, I believe. It's around £10 to buy, but it is worth every penny. It is a cracker of a game. And we've got 180 darts. This one hasn't got any image to go with it, which is quite common for Commodore 64 games. Not everything is going to have artwork. So sometimes you're just glad to get over it and cope with it. So from here, I'm going to just select a game and let's get this started. So Pains and Aches, just double left click on this one. This is now going to open up the C64 core, which is Vice. And it's going to auto load this one. So with the CRT images, you won't get this process because they're cartridge images, the quickest loaders, it will just boot straight in. But uh, the D64s and the .tat files, you will get a loading screen. And yeah, they will depend on game from game, but generally they do take a little time to load up. And here we go. So what I'm going to do from here, I'm gonna, not going to play any games for you, but I'm going to show you how to set up video settings. So right now, as you can see, there's a border around it. We can actually make this full screen. So if you just go into RetroArch whilst your game has loaded, so in settings, we go down to video. And if we just go down, we're gonna come across scaling. And this is where you can change the ratio of how the game looks. So if we just go down to aspect ratio, Core provided means it's just going to be a default of the 4x3 box image. If we want to make this into a full screen, I suggest you go to 16x9. It's going to stretch the image. So let's have a look how this looks now. I've stretched this to 16x9. So make sure you're in the quick menu. And from here, you can just go down to Core Options. So once we're in core options, you've got lots of different video settings to play around with just here. So if I just scroll down to video and go into pixel aspect ratio, we can choose what aspect ratio we want. So PAL is pretty much Europe and NTSC is an American ratio. So it's automatic by default. If I choose NTSC and back out of here and go back into the game, you can see just there, that is slightly different. So let's take, take a look at this again. And there you go. So remember, a lot of your video settings for the Commodore 64 in general is going to be under the quick menu and core options. From here, you can play around with a lot of settings. For example, we got system. Uh, the first option we got is model. So of course, there's several different revisions of the Commodore 64 over the years, as well as uh, region. So SX64 was apparently the world's first portable computer. Uh, so you've got lots of options there to play around with, which will make some games look a little bit better than others. We got RAM expansion. So for certain games, it's going to ask for extra what's called REU. So, for example, there's a Sonic the Hedgehog game which came out about a year ago, and it requires you having RAM expansion turned on. Uh, for example, we're going to need 256 kilobyte for that particular game. So just select that one. Okay, like I was saying earlier on, sometimes there's going to be times where we're going to need a keyboard. Your normal keyboard isn't going to work. It's not going to respond to the games when it's asking you to press yes or no, N or Y, or some numbers. So what we're gonna do in this case is just press select to bring up your virtual keyboard. Uh, this is select on my PS3 controller. It's not been configured. It just picks it up straight out the box as it were. So this is your virtual keyboard. And if it says press yes or press Y, then we obviously highlight Y 
and just press X as the action button and that will select it. Some games on Commodore 64 might ask you for an F1, F3. Uh, just go to the F1 or whichever function key it is. F1 being a function one. Just select it and again press action button and that's about it to get you up and running when it's asking for these keyboard strokes so that's about it for my c64 launch box set guide hopefully i've cleared up some little bits and pieces such as the different file extensions for commodore 64 games just remember that there isn't many dot crt images of games out there as much as there is d64 images but CRT runs straight away. You don't have to load anything. It's just pretty much just a case of double left clicking. So like I say, with dot CRTs, there is no need to wait. So join me on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. And I'm also on Twitter. Stay retro.